You're listening to Healthy Living with Eric Sue Podcast, episode 148. Your chance is now. I'm excited to announce the next Healthy Living Mastermind with Eric Sue. It starts March 13, 2017. Over eight weeks, you will get Eric's proven health and wellness strategies to help you get your health back and achieve your fitness goals. Join in with other highly motivated people as we all support and inspire one another. Visit www.ericwsue.com forward slash mastermind for all the details. Are you a first time listener? Hey, welcome. My team and I hope you enjoy this episode. If you are a long time listener, we thank you for your continued support. Do us a favor and share this podcast with all your friends because they deserve this amazing content as well. Okay, now on to the good stuff you all have been waiting for. Health tips, wellness advice, no hype. Welcome to Healthy Living with Eric Sue, the show that inspires, motivates, and educates you towards your healthiest life. And now your host, Eric Sue. Hey guys, Eric Sue here. Welcome to another episode of Healthy Living with Eric Sue. We have a fun and knowledgeable personal trainer with us today. Her name is Lynette Miller. We will be talking about finding your reasons towards your health goals and what category are you? So without any delay, let me introduce you all to Lynette. Lynette, are you ready to make it happen? Yes, I am. Let's go. Awesome. Lynette is a fitness trainer certified since 1996 in ACE, N-A-S-M, A-F-A-A, and N-E-T-A. Lynette has 25 years of experience in leading and teaching fitness teams in the corporate and private sector. Some of her certifications include Master Training for the Cycling Program, Silver Sneakers, Circuit Fitness, Resist Ball, and BOSU Stability Ball, Boxing, Taekwondo, Recreation Cycling, Real Rider Cycling, and more. Wow, Lynette, that was a little bit about who you are. Can you share with us a little bit more on how you got started? Yeah, sure. Yeah, right now I currently I own a gym, a small studio gym at in Oak Park, Illinois. It's a full service gym. We offer everything from personal training to cycling to kickboxing classes to Zumba and to yoga. We also provide memberships for um, the people in the Oak Park area, Oak Park and surrounding areas. So, and we cater to people ages eight to eighty. So all ages are welcome here. So basically, um, all day I'm here, you know, all day either training clients or just running the business on day to day. Uh, I am a single female, I'm 51, yeah, 51. And like, like you said before, I've been in the business for over 25 years and I love it. Awesome, awesome, I can hear it. So that's great. Um, before we dive into this topic here, we um, asked our guests a unique question and our audience loves to hear the answer to, and that's what's one cool or unique fact about yourself? Uh, you know what? I think I walk the talk. Mm. So what you see is what you get. So a lot of people, it may be like some hidden figures, some hidden things about them. I'm very transparent. So it's not, you know, it's, it's black or white with me. And that, I feel like that's unique because it's not like that with everybody. Right. So I'm going I'm to give you exactly what you see. So I, I don't have any hidden agendas or anything like that in this world. I'm just a straight, honest, extremely normal person. Excellent. Very good. Um, uh, we're going to f- find out more about you as we have this conversation about this topic. Um, and let's just get mm-hmm. right to it. So, so Lynette, we landed on this topic of finding a reason towards your health goals. Also about what's your category. Uh, can you share with the audience what you mean by that and how do you describe it to people? You mean in reference to finding my your health style? goals? Tell me, give me a little bit more. Yeah, so our topic was finding your reasons towards your health goals, right? And when we talked on our pre show, we were talking about how, how people were not maybe sure um, how to go about it and stay motivated, and they all need a reason, right? And then some people don't have no idea what type of person they are. I think we talked about. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. 
So what I do is uh, I categor- categorize clients um, based on their health goals. So you have clients that want to work out and love to work out. So those clients, their health goals are going to be, you know, the sky's the limit. Then you have clients that have to work out due to an illness or, you know, or the, you know or they're sick or they, they, they have physical therapy, they've been injured. You have those clients that just have to work out. Then you got clients that hate to work out. They hate to work out, but they got to work out. So and then you have clients that's a mixture of all. So the health goals for each one of those categories are going to be different based on, you know, their needs and uh, what they're trying to achieve. So, And, and so what do you do special maybe uh, to help each of these types of people? Oh, my motivation is off the chain. <laughs> so like I, like I told you before, because I live by example. So people see me, they see the way I look, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fit, you know, I walk the talk and look and, and talk the talk. So when people see what I look like, they want to look like that too. Mm. And a lot of times my clients, because of my training style and work with me so long, we end up having a similar body type, similar features, you know, our shoulders may form or like, so it's, it's mostly me motivating people to help them get to those goals, especially those people that hate to work out. Mm. So we have. So some... I'm, I'm just such a motivating person and, and people like to be around me. So that helps a lot. Super, super. And, and so when, when someone yeah. walks in, what do you um, identify or what do you do to help them uh, with their um, with their health goals? Let's just say someone comes in and they, they are just a little bit um, overweight. How, how would you help them? Mm-hmm. I would first I start out, you got to do a small, you know, consultation with them and see what, like what their health goals are and see what their downfalls are. Like, why haven't they been able to achieve, uh, you know, whatever it is that they're looking for. So we go from there, we figure out a plan. And then my main thing is we, it's personal training. So I'd be developed sort of a personal relationship to them. You know, I hear about their problems, about their kids and stuff like that. And then we become like, a, you know, we have a good personal, personal training, personal relationship. So it helps them come because we can be kind of come friends, you know. And that's mostly, I would say mostly like 80% of my clients, I end up being really friendly to them because I got a lot, a lot of long-term clients. I don't usually have clients that, that come just for a little bit and then they don't come back. You know, I have clients that bring pictures of their kids and stuff like that so that kind of helped them um we kind of helped them achieve their goals and, and and stick to them because me being more than just a trainer and a friend right right i was going to say uh when, when you consult with them what what is it that you do well in, in finding their reasons to exercise and so forth obviously everyone has some issues and so what is it that you do mm-hmm. To help them out. Follow up. A follow up. Follow up. I follow up. I'm a follow up queen. Uh, I, if you're on Facebook, I'm going to find out, like, the, you know, most people post that they went to the parties and stuff like that. So they know I'll find out. I'll call them. I'll text them. You know, they can't, you know, I don't usually let them miss their appointments. If they miss it, I make the, you know, I let them reschedule. And, uh, you know, I require them to reschedule. So it's just follow up and staying on them. Yeah. And that makes them feel like, you know, you you actually care about them, which I do. You know, it's like, yeah, she's not going to let me get away with that. So they, it helps them achieve the goals because yeah. they know, you know, they got to be responsible for it. Yeah. And, and I'm sure that um, you either write it down or you keep it in your memory about what they had mentioned to you in the consultation so that you have a reminder of what they are doing that may be sabotaging their efforts, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, when we first do our consultation, I take notes. So we t- I take notes and I usually find out like what they're, you know, like the, like I said, the bad stuff that they eat. And then we write down, we follow up, we follow up, we do a weigh-in. You know, I do weigh-in with my clients. It depends on like what their goals are. Maybe every two or three weeks and more, some maybe every month. So, you know, you, if you keep following up like that with the weigh-ins and what their bad things is and how to how to help them stay away from it, it helps them to be, to be successful as well. Yeah. So, and so, one of the um, 
the biggest thing is every couple of weeks, like those special clients that need to um, like be on a diet or something like that, like, well, I wouldn't say diet, but they need to change their eating habits. We come up with a plan. So we say, okay, this week, no beef or pork. And then you're going to cut down. Maybe you'll just have like one serving of bread a day. So every week, you know, I have those special clients that we have to come up with like a a special eating plan to help them. And they usually stick to it. Mm -hmm. Especially when they know it's, you know, for a short period of time. And then we come up with something else for the next week. Right, 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 right. What, What kind of questions are there that our listeners can ask themselves to help them stay motivated or give them that, that, uh, the inspiration to work towards their health goals. What kind of questions are there that they could ask themselves? Is it, oh, what kind of questions the client can ask themselves? Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing is what is my roadblocks? That can be like work schedule, uh, spouse, you know, significant other. So they have to ask themselves, what is stopping me from doing this? Is it just that I hate to work out? <laughs> so once they can figure out what their roadblocks is, it, it, you know, it pushes a lot of stuff out the way. Mm. And, you know, help you get around it. Just identifying things. Right, right, right. That's a big category, actually. I hate to work out. <laughs> you said what now? That category. I hate to work out. That's a huge category. That's a huge category. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that's a huge... It's, you know what? It, it's it's a lot of people that hate to work out, but you can overcome it. If you make it fun, uh, you make it interesting, and then, you know, I always tell them if they hire a trainer, in most instances, it helps them to be more successful working out. Because I come up with, like, innovative ways to, you know, you're working out, but it may be kind of fun. Maybe it's kind of like a dance thing. Maybe we're boxing, so... It is a huge category of people that don't like to work out, but I think it can be overcome. I know it can be overcome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and before you know it, it becomes a habit, and they like to do it. Right, and I was going to just say that that it's it's forming habits, positive, um, mm-hmm. happy habits that, uh, mm-hmm. in my opinion, it, that it has to show some progress, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. When, and then it just takes that first, like I said, I do the weigh-ins, and what it takes is, is when they see that percentage of fat and it drops down just a little bit, or they may have lose, they may lose three or four pounds. It keeps them encouraged, yeah. And then they keep going, and they keep going, and they keep going. And then before you know it, it's ten pounds. So it's just little stuff like that. Mm. You know, like I said, the main, the key is like follow up. You know, make people know you care, you care. Make sure you checking on them and and stuff like that. It. It, it makes a world of difference, let me tell sure, you. Sure, yeah. So there's a whole group of people out there who I, just probably, I don't know, for one reason or another, stop going to the gym. The New Year's resolution has kind of, um, the excitement has kind of faded away. And uh, mm-hmm. what could you, you know, inspire them or share with them to, to keep it going? What, what could you tell them? I think... The, the the biggest thing for those type of people is they need to find like maybe a group of people, find some people at the gym or wherever it is that they're working out with that become like a workout buddy. Then that's where they heal. They 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 hold each other account, accountable. So when you have somebody that's looking for you and you know that uh, they're waiting for you, it, it helps you to stay motivated and keep going past that resolution phase. Because you got like a group of fans, friends that you meet um, like that. And by me owning the small studio gym, it happens a lot. So those people that come just uh, for the initial, um, just initially to for the New Year's resolution, they end up staying because they find people that they that held, held them accountable and they're always looking for. So that's the biggest way to get around that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Um, what do they say? The first three weeks, people are like really – excited and and yeah uh, mm-hmm. really motivated yeah. and it then, takes and i always tell those yeah, people that it takes six weeks to make a habit so i'm like okay you're at four weeks you got two more weeks and this becomes a habit for you so just keep going yeah. so you you know that's my well that's one of my biggest things too is that uh, i tell people it takes six weeks to make a habit so if they're like 
three weeks. I'm like, you're already halfway there. You might as well keep going another week. And then it keeps them coming back. And if I don't see them, I'm like, you almost at the habit for me. So yeah. that's a big thing with them too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, what, what other programs do you have at your facility real quick? Um, I have the, uh, I have this, the real rider cycling program. And what this real rider cycling program is, it's, it's a bike, the bike moves. It's a stationary bike that's unstationary. So the bike moves side to side. It's the core balance technology with the bike. So that program is one in itself. No one else in the old park area has these bikes. It's the studio way up north that has it, but uh, we have that that program that's been you know it's been really good because so, people want to try these bikes out. It's not a regular cycling or spin class. Mm. It's a whole different level, and it this this class burns twenty percent more calories than any other cycling program. Mm -hmm. I also have another program that I'm really proud about. I cater to the seniors in the neighborhood. So I have a lot of seniors that come early in the morning and I do a free class for them. So that's a big program for me to, to see the seniors encouraged. Um, you know, they come, they, they make friends, they start hanging out afterwards. They got senior groups that they go to. So that's one of the other biggest programs that I'm proud about. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so what, what could you summarize, if you will, Lynette, um, how somebody can find their reasons towards health and, um, you know, first identifying what category they are, I guess, is, is the first step. But mm -hmm. how do you summarize um, how someone can find their reasons towards their health? I think look at family history. So if you look at yeah. like family history and see what's going on, like in your background, if you want to totally stay away from, uh, you know, like genetics and like people that might have heart disease and, and, and different, you know, illnesses and stuff like that. If you want to stay away from that, so, you know, that kind of helps you do things a little bit differently, maybe than your parents did or other people in your family, somebody might've, you know, passed away as a result of this. So you can look at those types of things to stay motivated and want to have, you know, live healthy and be healthy. Yeah. That's actually a great point. Um, you know, I, I could see, I work with overweight kids and, and um, mm -hmm. I could see their parents who aren't in shape and whatnot. And um, mm -hmm. I see kind of the the kids following their footsteps a little bit. And, Absolutely, um, yeah. And so the family history is, is, is a big reason, uh, mm -hmm. something to take a look at and a reason for yeah. um, changing that, uh, that past and, and creating a yeah. future of, of healthy and, um, mm -hmm. and so I, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, Cause I encourage the parents to bring their kids with them. Um, cause we have just a little small seating area. They don't even have to stay to the side, but they start to watch their parents work out. So guess what happens then when they go up, they grow up. And then when they grow up, um, they, they end up, um, knowing about working out because they came to the gym with the kids when they were small yeah yeah absolutely so um that that's a big thing because i have a few parents a few um parents that you know they got married and they had the kids and they started to bring the kids with them and the kids love coming they know that they're coming to the gym with their parents i didn't have that when i was younger so i didn't go to the gym with my parents you know things like that but now i try to make it more common and encourage the uh, parents to bring the kids with them. And they start trying to mimic the things that we're doing, so which is really good. Right. And right, I think right. it just helps cut down on childhood obesity because they got some type of foundation yeah. about working out. Yeah, so now now we're talking to the parents to, to be a great models for their kids. <laughs> yep, absolutely, yes. That's so important, so important for, for everyone involved. And, um, you know, do you have... Uh, three tips that you could share with our audience for staying fit and healthy, by the way? Okay, um, Stan, three tips to stand. Okay, uh, I would say watch what you eat. Watch what you eat. Be consistent. Consistency is going to be the key. And when I say consistency, I mean consistency in working out and consistency in eating well. If you fall short or if you have a bad day, don't let that you know, determine 
how how you're gonna move forward. Just go back to where you started and start over again. You know, you, like they said, if you fall down, just get back up again. So I would say just stand consistently, consistent, eat right, work out most of the time, and um, I think find find that find the accountability part, partner mm. would be my other thing. Yeah, that's 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 a big one on my list. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's <laughs> so easy for partner. someone to get in their head and just say, "No, I'm not going <laughs> to the gym." Or, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And if you, I think one of the biggest things too, as well, is if you're going to be the type of person that cannot keep yourself motivated, find a trainer. Find a trainer, or find maybe a smaller studio gym where it's more personal and people know you. Because I'm telling you, when people are looking for you, you know. Because I had a lot of people say, "You, I told you I was coming, so I came. <laughs> so when they know you, as opposed to like a big gym, no one knows you, and you're just there. So if you don't go, you're not, you're not missed. But I think if you have some place or some person that's holding you accountable, it makes you, you know, more successful. So that's one of the big things, I think. Excellent. Very good. Finally, real quick, Lynette, how do people get a hold of you? I am at uh, 447 South Boulevard. I'm in Oak Park, Illinois, right across from um, the Oak Park River Forest High School. So it's called B-Fit Fitness Center. So it is a fitness family studio, and we love everybody. Do you have uh, social media as well, you said? We do. I, you can always find us at B-Fit Fitness yeah, on Facebook. Or my my page is linked to um, the B Fit Fitness as well, and that's Lynette at B Fit. So either one of those, you can follow us and see what's going on. Very good, excellent. Um, I might have to stop by one day and check out uh, a cycling class or something like that, and um, experience with. Oh, you're absolutely, about. you'll love it. Yeah, <laughs> and um, I really appreciate the time you shared with us and. I know our audience is going to find some value behind this. I look forward to uh, introducing myself, like I said, and uh, I'll let you go and hope you have a great day. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Take okay. care. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you so much for joining us today on Healthy Living with Eric Sue. Head over to ericwsue.com for full recaps of every show in Eric's health and wellness blog. Your healthy living life is waiting for you. So stay active and be safe.